President Biden announcing a stronger military presence in Europe, extending troop deployments there and sending more military aid to Ukraine. The president is in Madrid for the NATO Leaders Summit and has said Russia's invasion of Ukraine, quote, shattered peace in Europe and every norm since World War II. I want to bring in the National Security Council's coordinator for strategic communications, John Kirby, for more on this. John, thank you so much for being here. Exactly how many more U.S. troops will be added to the 100,000 already in Europe, and how significant is this strengthened military presence? Well, this uh, this force posture change that the, the president announced today uh, really solidifies uh, and makes, in some cases, permanent uh, some of the some of the increases that we've already had. So you're right. Before the invasion, uh, we were at 80,000. Through some temporary surge deployments, we got to about 100. But what the president's announcing today will keep us for the foreseeable future at about 100,000 uh, troops, both on permanent and rotational orders. Key to this is some permanent changes, like two extra destroyers now that will be based out of Spain. Two F-35 squadrons, advanced fighters, now going to be based in the U.K. And now a command post of a headquarters element, ground held headquarters element, uh, permanently based in Poland. That's a major muscle movement. That is something that we just haven't done uh, at all in, in recent years. So these are significant force posture changes. They also come with what we call heel-to-toe rotational deployments. So, for instance, in Romania now, we'll maintain heel-to-toe brigade combat team, uh, ground brigade brigade combat team deployments in and out of Romania, as well as some additional rotational deployments in the Baltic. So taken all in sum, uh, it's a significant change to our force posture in Europe. And again, for the foreseeable future, what was 80,000 now will stay at about 100,000. And what's the role of these troops? Well, again, it, it covers the whole realm of military capabilities. That's what's so significant uh, about what the president announced. It's not just air. It's not just ground. It's also sea, maritime. We want to make sure uh, that we can meet our Article 5 commitment to NATO. That is, an attack on one is an attack on all. And that means we've got to be ready to defend the Na NATO's eastern flank across all different warfare capabilities. So it's ground, it's air, it's sea, it's cyber, it's space, uh, and that's what we're committed to. How real is the concern that this could come to that. Well, we hope it never does come to that. But Mr. Putin has invaded now a sovereign state next door in a completely unprovoked fashion. And he has shattered, as President Biden has said, shattered uh, the security environment that existed in Europe. So now we recognize that security environment is permanently now changed. It's not changing. It's not, it's not that it will change. It has changed. And so that we have to take the threat that Mr. Putin and his military poses to the NATO alliance seriously. Now, we're not seeing any imminent threat or any, any imminent indication that he intends to attack NATO territory. We're watching this very, very closely, but we've got to be ready. Our allies are depending on us, and we want to make sure that we can answer that call. Now, G7 leaders issued a statement calling the airstrike in a shopping mall in Ukraine a war crime and saying those responsible would be held accountable. Why haven't we heard directly from the president about this? We have heard directly from President Biden about the uh, the war crimes that uh, the Russian forces have been committing in Ukraine now for these many months. Uh, and the United States is going to work hard with international communities. You saw Merrick Garland uh, was just over in Ukraine not long ago, uh, helping work with authorities that are investigating these war crimes. We want to make sure the United States is participating in providing evidence uh, to these international bodies so that Mr. Putin and Russia can be, pro be properly held accountable uh, at the right time. Now, John, just last week, the Biden administration authored or authorized $450 million in military aid packages for Ukraine, along with the U.S. finalizing a purchase for an advanced missile system for Ukraine's defense. What impact do you think that could have on the war? Well, we're, we're trying to provide aid to Ukraine that is relevant to the fight that they're in. And right now, they're in this battle for the Donbass, which has been heavily reliant on what we call long-range fires, artillery, uh, you know, artillery and rocket systems that can give the Ukrainians some distance from the Russian forces that they're facing. That gives them not just distance, it gives them time, time to react, time to better defend. And so that's why we have sent these advanced rocket systems in. And you're going to see additional announcements from the United States, as well as from other allies and partners, uh, to provide Ukraine the kinds of capabilities they need in this particular fight. But we want to meter this out as appropriate to the fight that they're in, because war changes, war evolves. I mean, three months ago, uh, everybody was talking about Javelin anti-tank missiles and Stinger uh, uh, surface-to-air uh, shoulder-fired missiles, because that 
that was the need, that was the threat that the Ukrainians were facing from tanks and from aircraft. That's a different fight now. And so we want to make sure that we're staying relevant to the fight. And, and Turkey has now signed an agreement to support Finland and Sweden's bids to become members of NATO. What made Turkey sign on now and what does this mean for the alliance? Well, I'll let President Erdogan speak to the decisions that he made. We're obviously grateful and, and, and welcome uh, the fact that these three nations were able to resolve the differences and pave the way for Finland and Sweden to become uh, NATO members. These are advanced uh, militaries that we're comfortable working with, very interoperable. They will lend incredible defensive capabilities uh, to, to the alliance. Uh, but the differences were over issues like uh, an embargo on arms uh, and terrorism. But again, I think I'd let uh, Mr. Mr. Erdogan and the leaders of Sweden and Finland talk about that. President Biden was very much in favor of this expansion of NATO. Uh, he had a conversation with President Erdogan yesterday, urging Mr. Erdogan uh, to come to clo closure as quickly as possible on these issues so that we could get to, get to the point we are with this NATO summit, uh, that we are now able to move forward uh, on an accession process for both countries. And John, I want to shift gears a little bit because the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade has led to questions over what happens to service members stationed in states that ban abortion. Some are saying they should be given Given the option to relocate, what options are available to service members or their family members in those states to terminate a pregnancy? There are existing DOD policies about uh, about uh, abortion, and uh, and there are restrictions on that uh, in, in DOD policy and regulations on on how and when they can be done. Uh, but I know that the Department of Defense is looking at this now uh, much more uh, carefully after the decision uh, on Dobbs, uh, and they are examining what kind of policies and procedures need to change going forward. I, I wouldn't want to get ahead of that process. All right, John Kirby, we appreciate your time today. The National Security Council's coordinator for strategic communications. Thanks. Again. Again, John, we appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.